The Cadillac Escalade is essentially a brick on wheels, but somehow it's way more aerodynamic than that. A regular brick has a drag coefficient of around one. We actually simulated it here. Anyway, while a brick is struggling to break one, the Cadillac Escalade has a drag coefficient of just a 0.38, much lower. At this range, it's actually not that much worse than most supercars. So how does the Escalade have such a low drag coefficient given its bricky appearance? Let's find out. We have the simulation at 20 meters per second, and this plane is cutting right down the center line. It's colored in the velocity from zero in blue to 27 meters per second in red. It has some bad points, some really bad points, but some good points too. The first bad point is actually quite common for cars. The front is very square, much like the Peugeot 208. I bet you didn't think I was gonna make a comparison between those two cars, but the front's blockiness is obviously bad for drag because you have this large flat face plowing into very fast flow. You can see here how much the flow reduces in velocity by how big and dark this blue region is. And then you can see just how much air has to move around the front. It isn't very streamlined by any stretch of the imagination, but while this is bad for drag, it does provide the engine with a lot of flow. The front underneath of the Escalade is pretty good though. In fact, if you go out onto the road right now, the first car you'll see will probably have a front underneath worse than this car. So the reason why is the flow doesn't seem to be separating around the front edge. There's a bit of blue, but I think that's just the boundary layer forming. And the fact that the flow is so well behaved here is even more impressive when you consider just how much flow has to redirect around the front. Ferrari could learn a thing or two here. How does Cadillac achieve that? They do it with a cutting edge method. They slant the front lip a little so the air going underneath doesn't have to go around a sharp edge. The flow still accelerates around the edge as shown by the red section and that comes with low pressure here too and that's good for downforce, but there's no separation and there is less drag being produced off the lip then. So the underneath is good even by regular car standards and even by supercar standards, but the top of the front isn't so great. It's very square, which comes with major flow acceleration and low pressure too, but quite a lot of drag. But it could be worse because the flow doesn't separate. You can see how well the streamlines hug the hood. That is very different to how the flow goes over the brick front edge, or even a lot of older cars' hoods. Those edges are usually very sharp, so the flow has the same problem as it goes over a sharp edge underneath. It just can't. So it separates and swells around, and that's a lot of drag. Cadillac slightly rounded the front here, which makes all the difference. And that's even more important here considering how the air has to go over the edge. If that front edge were sharp, then there would be this large wake from it and even more drag than we were getting. So while this region isn't great how it is, it could be a lot worse. Looking over the hood, it's quite flat, like a brick surface, but compared to a lot of other cars, it still isn't that bad. In fact, a lot of decent cars like the Honda NSX have fairly flat hoods. Having a flat hood is bad for drag because you can see how there are all these streamlines traveling along happily, and then all of a sudden, they have to divert upwards because the windshield is in the way. The windshield pushes back on the flow, and we can see how the slow the flow gets around this intersection. That comes with a lot of high pressure on the windshield, which means that you have a lot of force pushing the car backwards. Drag. But again, this is pretty common on cars in general. So the Escalade isn't that much worse here. In fact, the windshield angle is pretty good. Cadillac sloped it quite a lot, and that helped to leave some of the high pressure on it. It's just that the hood is very flat to begin with. If they slope that up a little bit, that would knock off a bit of that drag produced here. As a side note, the windshield is sloped so much that there are no A-pillar vortices either. That's really good. Now moving to where the windshield meets the roof. Again, the Escalade is pretty similar to a lot of cars here. For example, even the Peugeot 208 has a similarly curved intersection. So the Escalade is pretty decent here because the air can flow around this edge very nicely. It does speed up a lot, and that comes with a drop in pressure, simply because of Bernoulli's equation, but in terms of drag, it's pretty decent. Cadillac could have easily made this intersection sharper and risked flow separation and the inherent drag that comes with it, but they rounded it instead. That's good. This simulation was done with open foam. If you're interested in learning open foam, then check out our courses here. There's currently a special on, which I think you might like. Back to the video. Up until now, we've only really seen sections that are either bad or okay, not really good. Let's now move to the back because there we'll see some very good features. The first is the roof spoiler. I kind of find it amusing because it really looks weird on a Cadillac. It makes it look more sporty. But anyway, it's a very good addition because you can see how the small the wake is behind the car. 
It's really impressive. The flow travels along the spoiler, and the spoiler drags it down to help reduce the wake size. From the drag orbit, there is still a lot of drag being produced, but it's not that red, so it's pretty good. Without this spoiler, the wake would be much larger and flap around more, which would then increase the drag. Now while this spoiler is great for reducing drag, it isn't great for lift. There are a couple of easy ways to tell how this spoiler affects the lift. The first is that you can see how angled down the streamlines are into the wake. That is a very strong indicator that lift is being produced. If the streamlines were angled up, that would indicate downforce instead. The other easy way to tell that the spoiler is producing lift is that if you look at the lift distribution, there is much lower pressure on the top than underneath. And because of that pressure difference, the spoiler is producing lift. And actually the entire Cadillac is producing 25.9 kilos of lift. That's much worse than anything we've looked at to date. But while that lift would be bad for regular cars, it's really not a problem with the Escalade because it weighs about as much as a small elephant. So a little bit of lift isn't that bad. In fact, it would actually be good for fuel economy because there's less weight on the tires, so less friction slowing the car down. From a drag point of view, the amount of lift produced is not great because that means that you're producing more drag too, because if you want to produce lift, you have to do something to the float. That means you're using its energy. Anytime you do that, you have losses. In fact, even if you were the other way around where the Escalade was producing 25.9 kilos of downforce, that would still be bad for drag because you now have to do something to the float to produce that downforce. Either way, that much of anything means the Escalade is producing more drag than normal. That's the spoiler. The next thing I'm really impressed with is the diffuser. Looking underneath, there is an obvious sloping up at the back which forms a diffuser. In fact, this diffuser is larger and more aggressive than many cars. So Cadillac intentionally tried to improve the car's aerodynamics. Whether they were trying to reduce the drag or lift, well, only they can tell, but it's very likely that they added such a large diffuser to reduce the drag. The reason being, again, because a little bit of lift isn't a big deal, and also there is some high pressure ahead of it anyway, which creates lift. And also, you can see just how well the diffuser kicks the flow up and reduces the wake size. So for a large car, this wake is actually pretty small. So it seems very much like Cadillac added the diffuser for drag's sake. So looking at the drag produced, there is almost nothing below the car's level because the wake is kicked up so effectively by the diffuser. Let's now look at a plane slicing through the wheels because the wheels are a major drag producer. This plane is 70 centimeters to the left of the center line. One thing about this particular model is that the wheels are quite small. So there are very large wheelhouses that aren't taken up. That is bad for drag because you have so much space for flow to enter and just meander around creating drag. We see this exact thing in this drag orbit. But because of what the Escalade is supposed to be, an SUV, very open wheelhouses are needed to accommodate the travel of the wheels from the suspension. Lowering the car reduces the Escalade's functionality. So while this model is bad for drag, it's kind of necessary here. One thing I'm impressed with is just how much fairly clean flow hits the diffuser. Usually the diffuser section right behind the rear wheels is just engulfed with really bad flow. The wheels produce wakes that just bum rush in and reduce the diffuser's performance. Here we do get some of that, but the diffuser still sees somewhat okay flow. I think that is largely because of just how high the car is off the ground. There is so much room that even with the bad wakes from the wheels, there's good flow to work with still. And if you look at the wake, you can see how much the bad flow over the diffuser affects its performance. Unlike in the center plane, where the flow is kicked up very nicely, here it just migrates downstream very level. Just quickly, if you'd like us to simulate your own car, then let us know here. Anyway, we talked about how the wheels were bad for drag. Let's now take a closer look at them. This plane is a flat sheet slicing through the wheels at 30 centimeters off the ground. There are huge wakes from both of them and more so for the front wheel. <laughs> that comes with a lot of drag and really, looking at the entire car, the front wheels are producing probably the worst drag because even though they're small, compared to the rest of the car, they're just producing a lot of red drag. They should be ashamed of themselves. By comparison, the drag of the rear wheels is minor. Moving up to 60 centimeters off the ground, the fender around the front is sneaky because it looks like it could be an air curtain. In regular terms, that means that you have this slot that funnels some of the air from the front through to around the wheels, but it's not actually an air curtain. This bit is actually a light. Nevertheless, the flow around the wheels at this height is phenomenal. There is minimal wake. To get this little wake is quite rare. Many cars on the road today have worse wakes at this height. 
I think that Escalade excels here because of its ride height and generous wheel housing. Those two things provide the flow with a lot of room to move around and escape. For cars that are closer to the ground and have larger wheels taking up the wheelhouse volume, the ways the flow can exit the wheelhouses are limited. As such, going through the rim is usually the more appealing option and as a result, we get larger wakes from them. So here, the large wheelhouses and high ride height are good. The rear wheel isn't as good though. There's quite a large wake behind it and this is a pretty bad location for it to be starting because you have the end of the car right here. So what is happening is that instead of the flow traveling around the rear and separating at the bumper, you have the car's wake effectively starting at the back of the rear wheels. So the wake is much larger. The reason why this is happening, I'm pretty sure is that at the back of the rear wheel, we have the meeting of two flows, the flow from the side of the car and the flow from inside the wheelhouse. When they meet, something has to give. Either the flow down the side of the car pushes the flow back into the wheelhouse and then continues downstream, or the flow inside the wheelhouse pushes out and flows around the corner. Unfortunately, here we have this latter option occurring where the flow from inside the wheelhouse is just pushing out and flowing around the edge. This angle is way too sharp, so the flow has to separate. We then get this wake and a lot of drag too. And now we're going to see something incredible. I know I said that the rear spoiler and the diffuser were impressive, and they are, but in this next plane, we'll see the most impressive part of this car. Do you see it? Look at how well the flow travels on the entire car. For being a brick shape, there is no flow separation until the rear. That is really good for drag reduction. Cadillac achieved this by literally rounding the front edges a little. That one small detail allows the flow to remain attached at the front. From there, it's a simple straight line down. If Cadillac didn't round those edges, the flow would have separated around it and the rest of the flow along the sides would be bad. We'd have to wait until maybe around halfway down before the flow reattaches and stabilizes. We get a similar situation higher up at 1.5 meters off the ground, but the side mirror wakes are spoiling things a little. Their wakes flow into the sides of the car, and not until the last passenger window do we get stable flow again. But one good thing to point out in this plane is that Cadillac provided the rear with edges. They not only look good, but also make the floor along the side separate right here. That does reduce the wake size over time and the drag at the rear. So there's another aero feature on this car. So while the Escalade definitely has some bad regions, there are a number of really well thought out regions too. Several aero devices were added to dramatically reduce its drag coefficient. As such, it came in at 0.38, which might not seem impressive, but considering what the shape is to begin with a brick, it is impressive. The lift, which wasn't a high priority for Cadillac, came in at 25.9 kilos. That is why the Escalade is way more aerodynamic than you think. One final thing, we're giving away these holographic stickers for free. If you want some, then you can tell us here. They're completely free, you just need to pay for the postage a few bucks worldwide. We've thrown a few stickers in a letter and send them to you. You can then stick them on your book, laptop, on your professor's forehead, whatever. And if you're staying on YouTube, YouTube thinks you'll like this video, so check it out. Peace out, amigos.